All right. Since it's time, we'll go ahead and get started. We do have a lot of things to cover. So welcome to Basics of Biblical Hebrew, Chapter 2. Today we'll be mostly looking at vowels. And, um, and there. And we'll do another check. Yep, looks like my pen's working. All right. So we'll start off again with modern phrases like we did last time, and we'll review the ones we had last week. So if you weren't with us last week, you haven't missed anything. Uh, then we'll uh, re we'll also review the alphabet. We'll see if there's any questions. There wasn't really a whole lot of uh, hard work to the workbook this time. It was, well, but also those are the worksheets. So we'll um, we'll give some time for questions, and then we'll look at vowels, and we'll have an introduction to the schwa and the dagesh forte. Those we will talk about more next week in chapter three, uh, but we'll introduce those and then we will uh, go over the vocabulary. Vocabulary is also easy. Uh, their names, and, and that's a good thing to practice. I remember when I was first learning Hebrew, uh, well, I hadn't been learning Hebrew for very long, and we took a trip to Israel and I could uh, at least make out names. There was a tapestry up on the wall and I thought, I wonder where all those are. And I started sounding them out. And um, oh, well, these are all the names of the tribes of Israel. So that was kind of fun, a fun discovery. But anyway, we'll uh, we'll go over the vocabulary at the end. So to review the modern phrases we looked at last week, we said hello, goodbye, and I don't think this was probably a big surprise to anybody. It's shalom, um, and you'll see here that we have a vowel there and a vowel here. We're going to talk about those. You'll get to learn what they are. So shalom, we use that for hello, goodbye. We also learned the hitra ot, or in some cases in Israel, they will kind of slur the ending of that and just or the slur the word or shorten it up and, and just say litra ot, litra ot. But somebody who enunciates their words properly will say le hitra ot. That uh, means see later, it means to be seeing you, but it, they use it in see later. Good morning is boker tov, tov is good, boker is morning. Boker Tov, good morning. Notice they put the adjective at the end. We always put the adjective first. We say good morning. They say morning good. Um, and you'll find that's pretty regular. We will be talking about adjectives probably about, oh, I think that's chapter five or so. And then good afternoon. Again, we'll talk about some of these vowels here. We have the A vowel. This is actually an O vowel. And then these are a diphthong. We'll look at that next week. Um, so tzach uh, rhyme, tovim, that's good afternoon. Then good evening, again, you have evening first and then good, so it's Erev Tov. And then good day, day is Yom, so it's Yom Tov. And then good night, night is Lila, so Lila Tov. So I don't know if I, let's go back here. So Shalom, Lit Rot, Boker Tov. Um, Saharaim Tovim, Erev Tov, Yom Tov, and Lila Tov. And then, as you are approaching Friday night to Saturday, since Saturday is the sh Sabbath, Shabbat, uh, starting at sundown, or even just getting close to that, it doesn't have to be, the sun doesn't have to be down yet, but if you happen to go to like a, a uh, Shabbat service, uh, somewhere, then you would use Shabbat Shalom. That's the typical uh, Friday night through Saturday sunset greeting, Shabbat Shalom. Okay, so we're going to look, review the Hebrew alphabet. Oh, by the way, um, I my screen is busy enough as it is, and so it's difficult for me to catch all the, any messaging or anything. So if you have a, I know it's up here somewhere, there it is. Um, if you if you have a question, by all means, unmute and then ask and stop me. I'll be happy to address your question. So um, if you have, if you send me the message, I may not see it. I'm not a, uh, it's just not obvious on my screen here. So we're going to review the alphabet. Uh, and here's the way you would say that in Hebrew. Aleph bait, Ivri, Ivri. This is Ivri. That's Hebrew. And then uh, Aleph, 
That's the first letter. Bait is the second letter. So Aleph Bait Ivri, that's the Hebrew alphabet. And this is going to be a review. We went over this. So you can say it along with me. You're on mute, and that's okay. I don't have to hear you, but um, the first one is Aleph. And then Bait. Notice that there's two. We have one with this dot in it. That's the Dagesh. When it has the Dagesh, it's B as in boy or bravo. And if there's no dot in it, it makes the V sound. Uh, you'd say it's a bait, you'd say vate. Uh, people don't normally do that, but you would certainly pronounce it that way. And then we also have gmail. The next one, you see that it has a dog ash. Um, but we don't, for modern Hebrew pronunciation, we don't make any distinguishing change between the two. It's going to be a just a G sound. It's not G as in giant. It's G as in goat or go or something like that. It's a hard G sound. Gmail is a hard G. Then Dalit also has a uh, dagesh in it. Uh, again, for modern Hebrew, it does not change the sound. We just use a plain old D as in door type of sound. Hey has an H sound. Vav has a V sound. The the Wa and W on here, those are the, I ought to just remove those because I don't teach traditional pronunciations. And the same way with these uh, non dogesh Gmail and Dalits. Uh, those are the traditional pronunciations. We just, Vav is always a V sound. Okay. Zayin is a Z sound. Uh, Chet or Chet. Uh, we'll talk about that. That's representing this little vowel right here called the tsere. We'll talk about it in a little bit. And so sometimes you'll hear chet, or you sometimes you'll hear chet. And I've got chet right here. But this is one of those where you kind of got to scratch the back of your throat a little bit when you say it. Chet or chet. Then we have tet or tate. Uh, yod. Is a, okay, so that's a, the, I, I didn't talk about the, the, the chet. You have that ch, but it's not like choose, and it's not like um oh what would be another word um it's it's going to be more of a k sound except that you're going to scrape the back of your throat tet and then tet t sound yod is a y sound cough notice we have three here we've got one with a dog ash when you have that it sounds like a k when you don't have the dog ash it's the same <laughs> as the het over here, the second one on this screen. They make the same sound. This third one, if you remember, it's the final form. We call that sofit, or well, Hebrew speakers call it sofit, which just means the, the final, the last, the end. So when, it's, when it shows up at the end of a word, it'll look like this, the third one, not like these other two, okay? And I'm gonna talk about that with the dog ash here in a little bit too. We'll come back and revisit that. Lamad is the L sound. Mem is the M sound. And it also has a final form when it is written at the end of a word. Instead of looking like the left one here, it'll look like the right one. Uh, that's just the final form. Final form means it's the last letter of the word. Okay. And so this helps out whenever you have words that are close together, not much space. If they have a final form, it makes it quite easy to see that that's the end of the word. Noon is uh, next. It's the N sound. And again, it has a final form. We'll look at that a little bit more here in a little bit too. Somic is just the S sound. Ayin is silent. Uh, it's originally thought, I think I shared this last week, that it originally was even farther back down the throat than the chet. And you see, like, oh, it was just really deep in the throat, oh. Um, because you take a name like Gaza, we use a G for Gaza, but there is no, it's not a gimel, it's an ayin, it's Gaza, Gaza. Uh, but we don't pronounce it like that. That's kind of the origin of this letter, but we we just, in modern Hebrew, they just count it as a silent letter. But it helps a little bit to have some history to that, I think. Pay, pay is another one of them that actually changes when we get the dog ash, so it's going to be P is in Papa, or without the dog ash, it's going to be 
a PH or F, F sound, and it also has a final form if it's the last letter of a word, like the name Yosef, Joseph, Yosef is going to have this for the final letter. Sade, it's a TS sound. It also has a final form. And Kof, and that one never scrapes the back of the throat. That is just a Surely, a, well, I've got Q, and usually that's how it's brought over to English, but it's uh, definitely a K sound. Uh, Raish uh, is the R sound. Then Sheen and Sheen, these are actually one letter. When you're reading an acrostic um, poem in the Psalms or Lamentations or even third, chapter 31 of Proverbs, you, um, you don't have both Sheen and Sheen separately. Uh, they're they're considered one letter. It just depends on where this dot is. So I don't know. And a memory device could be, you know, Moses said, if you um, you can be sure, he told the Reubenites, the Gadites, he said, you can be sure that your sin will find you out. Um, so if you start off with seen, it kind of looks like sin, you know, seen, uh, and it gets shined on. It's not shine, but sheen. I don't know. It's Yeah, the sin is shined on. Um, saying, I don't know if that helps, may not. Uh, hopefully you can come up with a better one than that. Um, but anyway, they're considered one, but it sounds like an S when it's above the left branch, and it sounds like an SH when it's above the right branch. And then Tav, it also can have or or not have a Dagesh, uh in the old traditional pronunciations, the non-dogash would be a TH sound. I have a couple of friends who read it that way. It's okay. It doesn't bother me. But modern Hebrew, they do not distinguish it. It's, it doesn't matter. Both of these. Uh, now I, oh, there it goes. Pen gave me trouble again. But um, both of those are given a T sound. So just remembering that the sofit, Sof, sof means end, end in the sense of like it could be a finish line or just just the end of a thing. For instance, the punctuation in the, in the Hebrew text has a mark called the sof pasuk. That means the end of the verse, sof pasuk, sof is the end. And that's the same, the, the same letters as in like yam suf. Um, some people think that means the sea of reeds. I personally think it probably should be understood as the end of the sea. I think that it, there's good biblical evidence. May, we may talk about that at some time, uh, showing that the Yom, so, Yom, Yom Suf is not some little marshy area in Egypt, but rather it's the Gulf of Aqaba, uh, the, the right branch or the eastern branch uh, right on our, our, uh, on our maps, but the eastern branch of the Red Sea. So sof means the end. So they, these are the sofit. Um, these are the letters that have uh, a final form. So the kof looks like that. The mem, the noon, the pe, and the tsade. Notice that almost all of them have. This would be your line if you're, you know, if you're writing like in English. And, and now my pen's not going to work again. So if you're, if you're going to write A and B or Y, you'd have this descender here on the Y. Or the G, you'd have this descender on the G down here. Uh, so we have these descenders on the final forms. Um, that makes them a little bit easier to remember. Mem obviously does not, uh, does not have a descender, uh, but it does look different. But anyway, those are the um, final forms, the, the sofit. I usually just call them final forms, but if I was talking to somebody who speaks Hebrew, I'd say sofit. So let's just basically run through this again quickly. Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Dalit, A, Vav, Zayin, Kate, Tate, Yod, Kaf, Lamed, Mem, Nun, Samak, Ayin, Pe, Sade, Kof, Reish, Sheen, Sheen, Tav. And then the Begat Kafat letters, um, those are the ones with the dots, the, the, the dog ashes in them. Um, 
the dog ash uh, this these are the dog ash linnae dog ash linnae means a light dog ash um, and they change the sound of the letter but for modern hebrew it only changes the sound in these three letters the bait the cough and the pay those are the only ones that change the others you know, the gimel dalit and the tav in modern Hebrew, those do not change whether they have a dog ash or not. But that's the dog ash line. That's the, the light dog ash. You're going to be introduced to a different dog ash, and they look exactly the same. But it's easy to tell which ones are which, by and large. So we'll cover that later. Okay, and we call these the bagatka fat letters. It's just based off of those, you know, letters, um, the sounds of those letters. And that's how we can remember that they are the ones who can have a dog ash line. These are the only ones that can have a dogesh lineage. And these are the only three that change. The bait, cough, pay, those are the only ones that change it to a different sound. Okay, then we also talked about, introduced the idea of the gutturals. And the gutturals are the olive and the hay, the chet, the ayin. And then resh is not really a guttural, but sometimes it pretends like it is one. And uh, We'll talk about those differences in the future, uh, but not that's not important for today's lesson. So the gutturals, Aleph, Hey, Chet, Ayin. And Reish sometimes acts like a guttural. Okay, any questions about what we covered or any questions from the workbook, which was basically just writing out the alphabet? Okay. Then we had the find the word puzzle. You know, I should probably, I could send these to you. That way we don't have to spend much time on it now. But you can see, uh, like down here, here's Aleph. There's the Aleph, the Lamed, and the final form Pei there. So that's where it is. Bait is over here. Uh, notice that they all are still going left to right. They may go left to right diagonally, but um, what I say, they go right to left. Yes, thank you. They go right to left. That's why it's important to have my wife here. <laughs> um, but I think what I'll do is I'll just pack that up and send that out in the email. I'll try to remember to do that so we don't spend much time on it now. Then on the other worksheet, um, one of these things is not like the other. Any of you that grew up with Sesame Street, I did not grow up with it, but my just my sons did. Um, I will. I can send this too, but you can see that these are all race, 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 race. Dalit got one that's not like the others. We have Zayin. The others are all Vavs. Here's a final form cough. Um, the rest are Dalits. Here's an ayin, as opposed to sade, all the rest of them. A tav, instead of the chet. The chet, instead of the haze. Notice they all have this little gap in them, just this little, little gap. And then uh, the cough, in amongst the baits, and the noon, and amongst the gimels, the Samic in amongst the final form mems, the Sheen in the midst of the scenes, and the Noon final form in the midst of the Vavs. This, this is designed to help you distinguish the things that look similar and what to look for to see the difference. Obviously, the Samic is more rounded than the Mem final form. Plus, if it's at the beginning or in the middle, it's not going to be... You, it had to be a psalmic at the end of the word to, to confuse that. And then the rest of this is really pretty easy. I don't know if we need to spend time on it, but it's just listing the alphabet in order, uh, supplying the missing letters. It's just segments of it. Now, one of the things I didn't mention last week that I probably should have is uh, for memorizing the alphabet, so it might help to break it up into pieces. And so you go, okay, Aleph, Bait, that's pretty easy because that's alphabet. So Aleph, Bait, Kimiel. And then once Aleph Bait Gimel, Aleph Bait Gimel, we work on that, and then eventually you add Dalit. Um, Aleph Bait Gimel Dalit, and just keep adding to it um, 
and expanding the the um, alphabet that way. So hopefully you're making good progress in learning the alphabet. Uh, it's not going away. We're going to be using the alphabet for until until May when the class is over, the end of May. Okay, and then we had arrows between letters that sound alike. Again, I can go ahead and send this uh, out. Uh, the vav and the bait without a dogesh both make a V sound. That's the kind of thing we're looking for there. I'll send that out too, the answers. Uh, okay, I told you we'd talk a little bit more about that cough, that final form cough, and what about a dogesh in it? And so um, can a final form or a sofit have a dogesh? And the answer is yes, they can, but they are rare. Uh, there's an example in Genesis 49, 25, in the third and sixth words. And here you see the, the cough with a dogesh. And these two, those are not very common. Those are rare to come by, to be honest. Notice the difference between these two and this one right here on the second word, the end of the second word. This is the way you see it most of the time. This is 99.999% of the time it's going to look like that. Um, or it's possible that you wouldn't have the comets in here. We haven't talked about that yet. Sometimes what you'll have is a schwa in here, but you don't normally have a dogesh. So um, anyway, that's an example. And this is um, part of the blessing uh, from, from God of the fathers of you. That means you, uh, he will help you and shed I, he will make you blessed. He will make blessed you, but these are also you. Those are pronominal suffixes. We'll learn those. Hmm. I don't know what chapter later on. So yeah, compare the word. we did that. All right. Another example is in Numbers 625. This is a part of the uh, blessing that Aaron is, was given to bless the people of Israel. And again, we see the typical ka, ka, but here it's ka. You don't get that scraping because it's got the dogesh. The first one does not have a dogesh, so it's, you still scrape ka. So anyway, this is the part where it says, may Yahweh cause his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. And so the yous here are, are these coughs. But we'll learn more about that later. Oh, by the way, the psalmic at the end, that just marks kind of like a paragraph break. Oh, and I mentioned earlier the sof basuk. Get rid of some of this. The end of the verse, that's what this is. You don't have to memorize all this. I'm telling you in advance. As we go through, I'll mention it some more. And then by the time we actually study some of the stuff, you go, oh, I know that. Bruce has already said it 300 times. So um, don't worry about that right now. Okay, now we're going to go to vowels. You do need to worry about this one. This is important. <laughs> you don't have to worry about it, uh, but it is it is something to pay attention to. So we want to learn the Hebrew vowels. We want to learn the Hebrew vowel letters. And I know I told you that that only the the alphabet was only letters. The vowels are not letters. Uh, we'll explain what this means to say vowel letters. And then uh, we also want to introduce this idea of the dogesh forte and the difference uh, from a dogesh line. So first, we want to learn the vowels. So a vowel is made, it's just like English, vowel is made by passing air through uh, the throat or mouth without stopping it. You know, a lot of letters will actually stop uh, the sound. Oops, I just covered my stuff up. Um, there. The, um, so that's, that's what a vowel, um, does not usually stop the sound. It's a, you know, ooh, ah, e, the, that type of thing. Vowels in Hebrew are not letters, only the consonants are letters. But we'll explain this thing about vowel letters. This is not to say that vowels did not exist. They existed in the spoken language, but not in the written form. There, okay. So if we took the vowels out of English writing, they would still be present in spoken English. For example, using Deuteronomy 6.5 as an example, love Yahweh your God with all your heart. 
would become, we wouldn't say love Yahweh, your good wit with ooh, your hurt. We wouldn't we wouldn't see it that way. We'd still say if we were reading it out loud without vowels, it would just come out love Yahweh your God with all your heart. When you read it out loud, you your memory supplies the vowels and it sounds exactly the same. That's what we have with Hebrew. When the Masoretic scribes sought to preserve the traditional text, we talked last week about the history of Hebrew. Uh, they didn't want to make any changes to the Holy Scripture. That was written, those were the letters, those were written with consonants. Therefore, they created a method of using dots and marks around and within the letters to preserve the spoken system of vowels and accented syllables uh, in the written text. Uh, this system of vowel points around the letters are called nikudot, nikudot. Now we have it written out there in English, and I have it written out in Hebrew. Uh, it should, does show up in the Song of Songs. I know in English we talk about the Song of Solomon, but in Hebrew it's the Song of Songs, as in like Lord of Lords. I mean, it's the superlative. This is, the, And so Solomon thought his song was the superlative of all songs. Um, uh, we'll just leave it at that. But in Song of Solomon or Song of Songs 111, the word uh, Nicodot is used. So we have the plural form here, Nicodot, and we have the singular Nikud there, but it's the, the dots. And we I, we need to be very thankful that the Masoretic scribes did this for us. Okay, this is a great service to have the pronunciations added. Otherwise, we'd have difficulty knowing uh, looking at just three letters, whether it's a noun or a verb or an imperative. So they straightened all that out for us, giving us the traditional understanding uh, by using these dots, the Nikodot. Um, it was also very beneficial when Eliezer ben Yehuda, we talked about him last week, when he resurrected the Hebrew language as a spoken language, uh, this, was a, this was a big help to us. It was, uh, I think that God certainly led them to to do this for us so it wouldn't be lost. So in Hebrew, there are long vowels and short vowels and reduced vowels. In English, we have long vowels and short vowels, and they make different sounds, like the, a long E or a short E or a long I or a short I. Um, there's, we, we make different sounds for the long vowel and the short vowel. Uh, but that's not true for Hebrew or for Greek, either one. Uh, long, short, and reduced all refer to how long the vowel is pronounced. It doesn't change the sound of the vowel, just how long it, uh, the sound is made. So Hebrew vowels are written, as we talked about, above, below, or beside, or to the left of letters. Uh, to the left of, because we're going to be reading from right to left, and we always pronounce the consonant before the vowel except for a couple of small exceptions, and that's not hard. It's just not like, oh, no, I got to start. It, it's, it's easy. They're, they're easy. Um, but, of course, they're not red. They're, you're going to see it printed on the page black like this. Um, so in English, we do something similar. We'd have Calvary Chapel, Springfield, Missouri. We Cal, we get the consonant, then the, uh, the um, vowel, then uh, Cal... Cal, um, actually, yeah, that's right. Cal, va, re, chap, all. We'd read it like that. That's kind of the way it works. Calvary Chapel, Springfield, Missouri. It, and again, if you were looking at this, you would have figured out pretty easily it meant Calvary Chapel, Springfield, Missouri. Um, and the vowel is pronounced after the consonant. All right. Vowels are pronounced after the letter. There is an exception, as I mentioned. But the bait with the dogesh makes a B sound. And we get a, this is called a sigil. It's a short E, eh. And so we put them together. We have be, be. That's what it looks like. You have the bait, and then there's the sigil right there. So be. And then we could use a different one. We still have the bait, which is still a B. And we have a kibbutz, which is a U sound. Uh, a long U sound. And so we, we put them together, put the kibbutz underneath the bait, and you end up with boo. As I did pronounce that, boo. As is the case with alphabet, the book teaches the traditional pronunciations, but we will be using modern Hebrew or Sabra pronunciation. Um, 
you're and you are free to use either. If you want to use the traditional pronunciations and do it by the book, that's okay. There's a lot of places that are teaching Hebrew nowadays. I mean, seminaries and such, and they're using modern Hebrew pronunciations. Uh, but it's up to you. I, as I said last week, I chose to go with modern Hebrew pronunciations to facilitate being with Jewish people on sh in Shabbat services or in uh, talking to people from Israel when they're here in the States or when I'm in Israel. Uh, but whatever you choose to use, be consistent uh, with your pronunciation, because as you're trying to learn your vocabulary words, if you if you do it differently, it's going to be harder for you to remember. But if you always do it the same way, it'll be easier. Okay, looking at the vowels. Long vowels. These are the long vowels. The first is a comets. And I also gave you the um, Hebrew spelling of the vowel in that line down here. Um, so the first one is comets. It's an A class. And then we have, for the E class, we have both E and I represented, but for long vowels, we only have one, and that's the tsere. Okay, let's go back to comets. I shouldn't have left that already. Comets sounds like A is in father. A is in father. Ah, it's always ah. It's never ah. And so it's never like, you know, we, we say Hosanna, and they go, where do you get Hosanna? It's not Hosanna. Hosan. Actually, in Hebrew, that's coming through Greek. In Hebrew, it be Hoshiana. But um, the ah, it's ah as in father. And then this next one is the two little dots below here, tsere, tsere. And it's always the e as in they or obey. It's that, what we would call a long a sound, uh, but it's an e class vowel. Uh, we'll talk more about these different classes later uh, before we finish today. And then we have the holum. The holum, or that one there, the holum um, is a long O sound. So those are the long vowels, comets, sere, and holum. So what we have here on this line would be pronounced ba, bay, and bo. Okay, short vowels. The sounds are not going to change, only the length of time we spend on them, okay? So the first one for the A class is a patak, patak. It's still A is in father, patak, this little bar. And then we've seen the segol in an earlier example. Excuse me, it's a um, short E sound, as in E is in met, eh, eh. Then we have the hirik, uh, and it has a sound like machine, the I in machine, which is, we would say it's a long E sound, but it's an I sound. It's a, in, in Hebrew, it's an I sound, but it's, a, we'll, we'll get some examples out here in a little bit. It's long B E, like machine, my E, that's it. And we have a comet's hatuf. Uh, we'll talk more about that because that looks an awful like, like the other comets. That'll be something we discuss more in the next chapter. So don't worry about it too much at this point in time. Uh, but that's a, a O, and still a long O sound, and kibbutz, it's a short U, but it's a, like ruler, it's a, it's still a, a long U sound for an English, long U, kibbutz. So, ba, be, be, bo, bu. Those would be the pronunciations of each. If these were words, that's, that's how they'd be pronounced. Ba, be, be, bo, bu. Okay, those were the short vowels. These are the reduced vowels. Now you notice that every one of them has this little schwa, and we're, we'll talk about the schwa later, and we're mostly going to talk about schwa next week, so don't worry about it, but this is how you know it's a reduced vowel. All three of them, there's only three, and all three of them have the what looks like a schwa under it, but they also have not only the schwa, but they also, we recognize the patak, we recognize the segol, and we recognize the comets. So, um, the, when you see the schwa with them, you know that that's going to be making a very quick sound. It's still, it's still A is in father. It's still a uh, short E is in met. And this is still a, a this is going to be like the uh, other comets, the, the O sound. But when you say them, notice amuse. When you say amuse, you spend very little time on the A, 
you you it's like you're trying to rush to get to the M sound. Same way with metallic. It, it's like the E almost doesn't exist. You're trying to hurry from the M to the T, metallic, metallic. And so that's an example of how these are reduced vowels. There's and this should actually be not commit, but commit, commit, because it's going to be a long O vowel. But it's in the same way that you say you're you're rushing from the C to the M here in English when you say uh, commit, but this is going to be commit, commit, commit. So anyway, the vowels are just very very short. The the, the um, sounds don't change that much. Well, the sounds don't change; they just get shorter. All right. So those are the oh yeah. So this is still going to be pronounced ba, and the next one's ba, and the next one's bo. That those don't really change much from what they were on the other. Again, the the difference not in the sound; it's in the length. And I already talked about this that we give those vowels very short length of time when we pronounce them in English. And the same is true for the vowels in Hebrew. So that's the Hebrew vowels. Now we want to look at the vowel letters. As Hebrew evolved, vowel letters were added to the spelling of words. They were not vowels themselves, but they indicated the presence of a vowel. Just a comment on that. Last time I was in Israel, that was 2018. And by this time I had I may have got been all the way through the Old Testament in Hebrew by that time. So reading with the Nikodot, the, the vowel points and everything is pretty common. I don't read often without the vowels. So when I was confronted with a sign or a poster or a banner or something in Israel, I had to figure out what the vowel is supposed to be to figure out what the word is. And so I used this and I thought, well, if it's got a vav in it, there is a good chance that that's going to be a U vowel or it's going to be an O vowel. And so knowing this about the vowel letters, this can help you. If you see the hey, it's probably going to have an A vowel. And then the, the uh, yod could be like the tsere, as in obey, uh, that E or they. Um, or it could be a, with a here, it can have a, the uh, long, the long E sound, E as in machine. So I anyway, it can help you to figure that out if you end up in a situation where you're looking at Hebrew text without vowels. But anyway, they they began putting some of these letters in to indicate the presence of a vowel. They weren't the vowels, but they would mark the presence of a vowel. Um, all vowel letters are long, and they don't change. Now, the ones we looked at, short vowels, reduced vowels, um, long vowels, they can vowels can lengthen, uh, vowels can shorten. The vowels can change depending upon what's happening in the word. Uh, but when it comes to the, the vowel letters, they're long. They do not change. They will always be long. They do not reduce. Okay. So here's the vowel letters. So if the if the vowel is associated with the hey, uh, you have ba. It's still pronounced ba. It's still a as in father. Uh, with the but notice here that the tsere and the sagol they both end up being the same sound as the as the tsere. So this would be bay, this also would be bay. And then the holum is still going to be the L. So it doesn't really change that much. Just you just need to be able to recognize what you do with it. The only thing that really changes sound is this one because it's going to have more of a tsere sound to it. Okay. So that's what the hey, so we had ba, be, bo. That's the uh, way that each one of those would be pronounced. Both of them in the middle. Both of the middle are be, be and be. Okay. With a vav, as I said a little bit ago, I know it's either going to be an o sound or a u sound. So we have this holum vav, or you have a shurik. It's either an o sound or a u sound. Um, so both of those are going to be bow or boo, okay? Which these these are like the other o vowels, like the other u vowels that we looked at. The, the sound has not changed. It's bow and boo, All right? And then with the yod, it's either going to have a indicate a, a tsere or a segol, and here again that they're both going to have the tsere sound. So both of these are going to be bay and bay. And this is going to be B. 
Uh, it still has the sound of the I in machine, machine. So that's going to be bay and B. And notice that, you know, these are empty because there's nothing there. That's the, giving you the only ones that exist, but I'm keeping them relative to the same kind of chart. When hey is at the end of the word, it is used as a vowel letter. For instance, Torah, Torah. Uh, here's our ah, and that means law. Torah means law. The vowel letters, uh, Vav and Yod, are called unchangeable long vowels because they do not reduce. The most common vowel letters are the Hirik Yod, the Holom Vav, and the Shurik. Those are the most common ones. Vowel points are pronounced after the consonant with an exception. I say one exception. There's actually probably two. We'll see one on here pretty soon. Uh, so when we look at this, we have a resh and a comet. That's an A vowel. And so that's ra. That's how you pronounce ra. That's what it looks like. Um, we have a holum. That's an O vowel. And so you have the tav, there's a T sound. And you have the O, that's to. Uh, we have the holum vav. It's still an O sound. And you have the T sound with the tav. And so it's still pronounced to. And then you have the shurik here, u, so you have the zain, it's pronounced zu. And uh, one of the things I will email to you either tonight or tomorrow will be a worksheet where you can practice. If you, all you have to do is pronounce it right and you can tell it'll sound like an English word and you can um, work on, on that uh, pronunciations. Defective writing, that's a little, uh, misleading because nothing is defective in it. They just, that's what they call it, defective writing as opposed to full writing. Sometimes words with vowel letters are written without the vowel letter, just giving you the vowel points. It's pronounced exactly the same. Exactly, it's, it's pronounced exactly the same. Uh, it doesn't change anything. It's just another way of spelling it. Um, and it's, but, but even though they call it defective, it's not an error. Uh, it only means that the word is written without vowel letters. Um, Defective writing is pretty common. If the vowel letters are included, it's called full writing. But here's some examples. Now, the grammar has uh, shofar. Here's the sh. Here's the o. Here's the far, shofar. But on this other side, we don't have this holom vav. We just have the holom right here. We still have the sheen for the sh. We still have the o. And we still have the far, shofar. And so it's pronounced exactly the same. It doesn't change the meaning of the word in any way. Then madua means why. And you can either use madua with a kaboots and get that U sound, or you can have a shurik in there and get the U sound, madua, why. And then David, David, you, you have the hearing, you're still going to pronounce it David, but if you have the, the uh, vowel letter, it'll be David. It doesn't change the thing. Uh, if you see a sheen with two dots, one of them is going to be the sheen, indicating sheen, and this one is indicating a an oval. So it would be show, show. And there's a note. We'll look at that in the book when we get ready to do the vocabulary. Okay, some examples not in the grammar. Yavo, we have the oval here. Yavo, we have the whole involved. Exactly the same thing. Uh, Yasim, we have the Herrick here, uh, we have the Herrick Yod here. They're pronounced exactly the same. Kaboots, and are they Shurik and Kaboots are uh, still pronounced the same. Here's one of the cases where the letter or where the vowel can be pronounced before the letter. And I don't know that this ever happens with anything except Jerusalem. Uh, there's another one that does happen a little bit more often, but this, I said there's maybe two. I said one, and that's the one I was thinking of. When I said two, I was thinking of this one. Yerushalayim, you're actually going to do this alpha, um, this uh, patak and, and this uh, hirik uh, together, Yerushalayim, uh, or it could be spelled with the with the yod added to it, Yerushalayim. Still pronounced the same way, but here's a case where, and it's not always spelled this way, but sometimes you'll get that hirik that be pronounced before the noun. There is another one that's more common than that. I don't know this ever happens with any other word other than Jerusalem. 
So defective writing is not a mistake. Defective writing is very common. We have Torot, that's laws. Or we can have Torot, it's still laws. It's just a matter of whether it's a holom or whether it's a holom bob. So we'll look at the Shva and Dagesh Forte. Uh, the Shva, the Dagesh Forte, Forte and the Comets Hatuf. That's the Comets. The Comets look like a little T, and the and the T kind of looked like it's a, a little drip or something at the uh, underneath it. That's the was the A, a vowel. Um, but but sometimes it is an O vowel, and so we're going to be looking more at that when we get into chapter three. But we just want to introduce them right now. Shva. Notice how the in this way, I don't always do this, but notice that E is superscript. It's because it's it's like the E vowels almost not there. Say so, so Shiva. You don't say Shiva. You say Shva. The E is just so fast. Um, so that's a bait with a dagesh. So it's a B sound, and there's a Shva. B. It's still B, but it's it's really fast. Uh, the schwa is not a vowel, therefore it doesn't belong to a vowel class like A, I, or U. Uh, there's two kinds of schwa. There's a silent schwa, which this is going to be a big surprise. It doesn't make any sound at all. <laughs> why is it there? It marks the end of a syllable. That's why it shows up. And it helps you with your syllabification and to pronounce the word properly. Uh, but then there's also the vocal schwa, which is like the one up here in the heading. This is how you write schwa in Hebrew. So you have shava, but you don't say shava. You say schwa. The E just doesn't get very much of a pronunciation at all. And so we'll look at the rules uh, for determining the type of schwa when we get into the next chapter. Just want to introduce it, okay? Uh, we also want to look at the dagesh forte and the difference between it and the dagesh lene. Well, we'll describe the terms. The, our grammar uses the term dagesh lene and dagesh forte. There are some grammars that use do, uh, weak dagesh and strong dagesh, and these are corresponding. Weak dagesh lene, weak dagesh, dagesh forte, strong dagesh. In Hebrew terms, it's the dagesh kal. Kal means light or easy. So this is dagesh kal, or light or weak. And this is dagesh kazakh. Kazakh, that's strong. Kazakh. Dagesh kazakh. Um, all of these refer to the same two dogs. Dog, this isn't six different dog etches. There's only two. And we have the light dog etch, which is what we've learned so far, that it changes the dog etch line, changes the sound of the letter. The dog etch forte actually doubles the letter. So we'll look at that. So the dog etch forte, we have the dog etch in the middle of the bait. And that actually makes like two. So when we look at yabasha, yabasha, we, it's like two baits here, two Bs, as it were. So we have Yab, and then Ba, and then Sha, Yab, Sha. The sound of the double consonant is the hard sound. The dog Eshelene doesn't double it. Malka and Malka. The, we don't have two coughs. So that's the difference. The dog Eshelene only affects the letter sound, dog Forte changes how many of that let, of those letters there are. It's like putting two letters together. So only these letters can take a dog ash line, the big ad fat letters, the one we've been talking about last week and this week. Those are the only ones that can have a dog ash line. If it's a, a dog ash in any other letter at all, it's going to be a dog ash forte. Sometimes these will have a dog ash forte, but we'll have rules in chapter three to tell us how to tell the difference. These letters... And only these letters cannot take a dagesh forte. And this is the our set of gutturals that we talked about. These are the gutturals. They cannot, that's one of the reasons you need to memorize what these are, because they do not take a dagesh forte. And Raish also does not take a dagesh forte. Okay, vowel review. I'm just going to go through this really. Uh, ba, be, bo. Ba, be, be, bo, boo. Ba, be, bo. Um, and you'll want to particularly make sure that you can recognize the short ones. This will be important later in chapter three. You want to make sure you know what the short vowels are. Ba, be, be, bo, bu. Okay. So let's go over the vocabulary. On page 13 of our manual, or of our grammar. 
as I said, they're all names. So again, I know you, you guys are muted, but you can go ahead and say them with me. The first one, this is on 2.17 on page 13. The first one is Avraham, Avraham. Notice there's no dog, it's just not Abraham, it's Avraham, okay? Second one, Aharon, David, Yehuda, Yahweh. Uh, if you wanna say Adonai, that's okay, most people do. I used to always say Hashem, which means the name when it came to it. Lately, though, I've just been saying Yahweh. Notice how many times that's used. 6,828 times. That's what those numbers are. It tells you how often they're used. Uh, David is used probably more than almost anybody. Well, Israel. Yeah, we'll just keep going down the list, though. Yehuda, Yahweh. Okay. Yehoshua. Yehoshua. Yosef. Yaakov. That's Jacob. Yitzchak. 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 Uh, Yerushalayim. And he lists both spellings there. Yirmiyahu. It's Jeremiah. Yirmiyahu. Um, and some people will kind of slur that. In Israel, modern Hebrew, they'll say uh, Yirmiyahu. Yirmiyahu. But uh, we'll stick with Yirmiyahu for this class. Uh, Yisrael, Israel. Canaan, we you know you kind of wonder when you look at it in English. Why do we pronounce it Canaan? Well, it's Canaan. That's why we have the two A's, actually three A's, but two together. Mitzrayim, Mitzrayim is Egypt. Moshe is Moses. Um, Esau, Esau is Esau. Paro, Pharaoh. Zion, Zion. Is Zion, Shaul is Saul, Shlomo, Shlomo is Solomon, and then Shemuel, Shemuel is Samuel. Does anybody have any questions on that? This is not so hard. I think you could probably easily remember these. Just go through and practice pronouncing them. But as we branch onto other words besides names, you might be find you might find it helpful to memorize words grouped according to meaning. If they're related like body parts or whatever, sometimes it helps. Uh, try reviewing every 10 minutes after you initially learn it. Then review 60 minutes every 60 minutes after that. Review again 24 hours later and then review every couple of days until you just have it automatic recall. Okay, just a couple of housekeeping things here on 2.14 on page 11. Oh, we, we've got time. I'm trying to hurry. We're doing all right. So 2.14 on page 11. I think their paragraph is a little confusing. I think that once upon a time, books may have been printed more this way. I really don't see this happen very often. You know, I talked about having a sheen with a hole involved a few slides back and had two dots and you look at it and go, well, is it a sheen or a scene or is it both? And it, well, no, it's a sheen. And the the right dot is, shows it's a sheen and the left dot shows there's an oval there. Um, and he talked, and the books that I have, my Bible and a lot of, if there's a scene with an oval, it'll have two, it'll have the two dots right near each other. And so I haven't really seen much in what they're describing here. So if this sounds really confusing, don't worry about it. Uh, I don't think you're going to run into it all that often. That's on 2.14. Let's flip over a couple of pages to 2. Dot, um, well, it'll be 2.18 on page 14. I want you to draw arrows on your chart uh, because I mentioned earlier that vowels can lengthen and vowels can shorten. And I think that this will be helpful if you kind of get an idea of how that works. And so if you just want to draw a little arrow, okay, so you're looking at the long, short, and reduced, the middle uh, middle row, short, you have the patak. Um, you may want to draw an arrow from there up to the one right above it, to the comets, because a patak can lengthen to a comets. You might want to draw a second arrow from the patak box to the tsere box. Sometimes a patak will lengthen to its array. Okay, moving over to the next one. A segol, um, 
You might want to draw an arrow going up to the tsere, a segol can lengthen to a tsere, and a hiric, you might want to draw an arrow to the tsere on that also, the hiric can also lengthen to a tsere. Now, while we're on the hiric, you might want to draw an arrow downward toward the hatef segol, because a hiric can reduce to the reduced segol vowel. Okay, staying with the short vowel, middle row, um, going to the third column, the, kum the kumets hatuf can lengthen to a holum, and the kaboots can also lengthen to a holum. So draw two arrows there, and then draw one last arrow from the kaboots down to the to the third row, the reduced comets, the hatef comets vowel. The kaboots can reduce to that. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight arrows that I'd like for you to draw in there. Does anybody need for me to do that again? All right, if you have any questions, you all have my email address. Many of you have my phone number. Do not hesitate, please, do not hesitate. This is something I really enjoy and I would be, I would be it'd be my pleasure to help you. Send me your questions by text or, or email and. And I will be, I'll be happy to help you. When I say it's my pleasure, I never work for Chick-fil-A. When I say it's my pleasure, I mean it is my pleasure. Okay. And then the last note I had on here I wanted to mention is that I will send out notes uh, that has some of the Hebrew. Uh, you may not have been able to write down all the Hebrew forms of some of these words, like some of the greetings we talked about at the beginning, or the nikudot, or uh, nikud, or just uh, the shva, uh, or well, or the um, uh, he doesn't have in the book the the um, Hebrew spelling of the vowels, um, but I have them all in notes, and I'm going to send out notes with all of that information. I'm going to send out notes that basically are drawn from this PowerPoint presentation, and I'm going to send out um, notes on vowels along with exercises that you just um, uh, pronounce pronounce the Hebrew letter and vowel or it might be Hebrew letters and vowels, and you will come up with a an English word. Again, if you have any uh, question about that, um, let me know. I'll, I'll get that sent out. So the homework is the exercise two in the workbook. Uh, and then I'm going to send out some pronunciation practice worksheet, worksheets to help you just get used to pronouncing. In fact, you can come up with your own. Once you know the sound of the letter and what the vowel is, you could start writing notes to yourself using Hebrew letters and Hebrew vowels. Um, some words might be kind of difficult to, to get across, but uh, keep it simple. And I think you can actually make little notes to yourself. Um, you know, could you do the quick brown, brown fox jumped over the lazy dog or something? Yep, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't have to be that long, but just uh, um, hello or... Um, Goodbye, or some just just something that would uh, uh, that you could use uh, Hebrew letters and vowels for. So, do the pronunciation practice um, and the um, exercise exercise two. Uh, you want to make sure you have the vowels memorized, especially the short ones. You you, you need to be able to recognize those because that's going to make a difference on determining whether a shva is silent or vocal. And then you can go ahead and read uh, before we meet again next time, Chapter 3, and we will go over Chapter 3 next week. Any questions? Uh, I have a question. Okay, Mason. Um, so if we wanted to rewatch this, I see it's recorded. Um, is it on, like, YouTube or something? Not yet. Um, I, that's the goal. I'm recording it. I'm just recording it locally. Um so that we can put it out on YouTube, but right now we don't have a setup, and I've got to get with with Joey or somebody else. But Joey's been so busy, um, but I've got to get with somebody to get him out there. But that's the plan. The plan is to get him out on YouTube. Okay, awesome. Thank you. But but, but they're not there now. And yes, yeah. I'll record it on mine, but my computer is not available on the internet <laughs> to link to it. So I'm sorry about that, but we'll eventually get them there. That's okay. Any other questions? All right, it is eight o'clock and we're done. How about that? It doesn't always happen that way. I'm glad to do that. So appreciate you guys being a part of the class. I really appreciate your your uh, desire to learn Hebrew and 
Uh, I want to help you in any way I can. So like I said, if you have any questions, let me know. So have a good rest of your week. Hopefully we'll see some of you at Wednesday night service or see you Sunday. Lord bless your study. Bye. I'm sorry, did I get the wrong thing? Oh.